This entitled mom believes she's entitled to everything, including pushing her way to the front of the line. But all hope is not lost, as something hilariously unexpected happens to fight off this entitled mom. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamp show. I was at an amusement park earlier this year. A brand new ride had just opened, so of course there was a huge line for it. I had taken my girlfriend that day and bought us fast passes to skip the lines. Fast passes cost nearly three times as much as regular passes there. It was around noon on a hot day and my girlfriend and I head over to the new ride. We circled it and weren't able to see any fast pass lines, but we both wanted to go on the new attraction, so we just got into the regular line. The sign said we were about 45 minutes from the front. Immediately behind us was a large lady and her son, who was about 10. My girlfriend then spots some people entering a different queue wearing purple wristbands, which are fast passes. So we go past the boy and his mum, exit the line and enter the new line. Since it had just opened, I guess they hadn't made an official sign for it yet, but there was a little gate with paper taped onto it that read fast pass and wheelchairs. We go through and there's about 20 people in front of us now. After about a minute, we see the entitled mum and kid behind us again. I didn't make much of it, they probably hadn't seen the entrance just as we had, but my girlfriend whispers in my ear, they don't have fast passes. I look at their wrists and she's right, their wristbands are green, the regular ones. She asks me if maybe we should say something so they don't waste their time. Poor kid, I think to myself, he probably wants to get on the ride as quick as possible. They're just gonna send them back when they reach the front, so I tapped the entitled mother on the shoulder. This is paraphrasing by the way, this was all really in Spanish. Excuse me, this line is for purple wristbands only. They won't let you go on through here. You can go back. They'll let me through here. They always do, she exclaims. My girlfriend and I look at each other like, what? Okay, sorry, I reply. About three minutes go by and I guess we had been distracted for a little bit because I see there's about a five foot gap in the line in front of us. So we turn to move forward and the entitled mother shoves past us, her son right behind her. I open my mouth to say something, but decide against it. They're not gonna get on the ride anyway, so there's really no point. They're really strict about the wristbands. We finally reach the front of the line, and the ride operator asks to see the entitled kid and the entitled mother's wristbands. They were clearly trying to hide them by keeping their hands behind their back. The mother quickly shows her the wristband and runs past her and immediately starts getting on the ride. Her son does the exact same. The ride operator tells her that this is the fast pass line and she has to go back to the end of the regular line. Okay, next time I will, I didn't know, she responds. No, you're gonna go. Exit the ride and go to the back of the line. She lowers her son's harness and then her own. I already lowered my harness. I'll use the normal line next time, promise. The ride operator turns around and lets me and my girlfriend through. There weren't any seats available on the ride anymore, so I knew they were gonna get kicked off. The ride operator walks to her station on the other side of the platform presses a button on the console and all the harnesses go up. She walks towards us and gives the entitled mother a dirty look. The mother looks ticked off, like a demon from a horror movie. She violently gets up out of the platform, cursing the operator out, her son right behind her. Once off the ride, the entitled kid looks back and spits on the seat. The ride operator went and got some Lysol wipes and cleaned the seat. My girlfriend and I sit on the ride and lower the harnesses. The ride operator leans in to make sure they're tight. They're really annoyed. I jokingly tell the ride operator, they will be when they find out he isn't tall enough, she replies. I don't know if this mother had gotten away with it multiple times before, and that was the whole, oh, they'll let me in. There was definitely something satisfying about the fact that she literally was sitting in the seats and the ride operator went out of her way to lift all the harnesses just to kick her out of there. I mean, that's pretty embarrassing. Do these people have no shame? Do they want to take advantage of other people that much? Yeah, unfortunately they do. I'm a lifeguard at a busy pool, so dealing with entitled parents is about half of my day. Most entitled parents just don't understand why their two to three year old child, who can't swim, isn't allowed to go down the slide and get caught in the wave pool, or jump off the diving board into the 12 foot deep drowning area. I don't mind dealing with those parents. I even smirk when they tell their kids the lifeguard won't let them have any fun. But this lady wasn't like the rest. She was special. First, some context. There are 
ducks that hang out at the pool. They just wait around and leave people alone, and everyone enjoys having them there. Every summer, the mama ducks have little baby ducks, and us lifeguards really love them. Every year, we name all the ducklings and pay extra attention to the pool when they're in it. There are two rules regarding the ducks. One, don't harass the ducks, and two, don't touch or pick up the ducks, especially the ducklings. The reason for the second one is that if a mother duck thinks her baby is sick, usually because a person touched it, she'll snap its neck. As I've said, we get very attached to the ducklings and had already lost two that summer. One was at the beginning of that day. Now for the main event. The pool was about 10 minutes away from closing and I was in the position that closes. There were maybe 10 or 12 people in the pool as things usually died down around that time. There was a mother in my area of the pool waiting around with her four and two year old sons. I'm watching them because they're 25% of the people in the water and 50% of the people in my area. The mum is playing with her kids when a mama duck followed by all of her baby ducks passes by them. The four-year-old starts trying to swim after the ducks, saying how he wants to catch them. The mum scoops him up and turns to me and asks, can he chase the ducks? I say, no. The kid keeps paddling trying to reach them, and his little brother starts to do the same. The mum says, let's go get the ducks, and starts following the ducklings. They're right behind them, and the four-year-old almost grabs a baby duck, but just ends up splashing it. I use my whistle, don't chase the ducks. I'm slightly ticked off. The mum ignores me and keeps following the ducks, pushing her kids in front of her so they can reach the ducks better. The kid tries to grab one. I whistle sharply. Leave the ducks alone! The mum turns to me, points to herself and raises an eyebrow to ask if I'm talking to her. Yes you, I answer. Leave the ducks alone! She turns around and keeps chasing the baby ducks. I shake my head. I'm mad. By this point the mama duck has figured out what is going on and guys her babies over the lane line into the swimming lane. The lanes are for adult use only. Children can use them if they're able to swim laps and have a wristband. There is no one in the lanes at the time, so the ducks know they'll be safe there. This doesn't stop the mum and her kids though. She is determined. She starts to lift up the lane line and push her kids through. I'm not sure how many of you know this, but four and two year olds aren't great at swimming laps. I whistle and yell, get out of the lane line and stop harassing the ducks. The mum turns around and glares at me and goes under the lane line. She starts moving her kids under the next one to reach the ducks. She was a peach. I had had it with her by that point and knew my boss loved the ducklings as much as I did. So I shot three fingers up counted down and closed the pool 10 minutes early just to get her and her kids out of the pool. Everyone got out and no one complained because they didn't know what time we really close. The mum looked really ticked off that her kids didn't get to drown a baby duck, but all my co-workers were grateful I closed early. I told my supervisor and they told me, good job. The rest of the baby ducks survived the summer. Isn't it sad when a mother duck is a better mother than a human being? I don't know, maybe some of you aren't too surprised by that. Especially Especially if you're a voicey veteran and you've been watching these videos for some time now. The mother duck was trying to protect her kids while the human mother was teaching her kids how to drown them. It's stressful enough as a lifeguard trying to make sure people don't drown. He probably wasn't expecting that this would be part of the job today. So my brother is an amateur tennis player and at the time me and the rest of the family decided to go down with him for a regional tournament as it was a fairly nice seaside town and was the 20th anniversary of when we decided to move to the UK from Bulgaria. During one of his matches where myself, the family and the rest of the club team, including the coaches, were watching and supporting him from the stands. An entitled parent turns around and tells us to stop cheering for my brother. Of course, we're pretty confused. It's a sports event. Isn't that what you're meant to do as a spectator? Plus, we weren't making that much noise aside from clapping and we did so in between points. So we didn't disturb them whilst they were playing. We ignored him, thinking he was getting a bit touchy from the whole thing and kept going. This is where the fun begins. EP turns around and starts screaming at us, saying that we were disturbing the game and making his son feel bad because nobody was cheering for him. My mum decides to speak up and says there's nothing in the rules that says we can't cheer and that we'd lower the volume if it was making the son upset. Yeah, that wasn't enough for him. He turns to my mum and starts screaming in her face, saying that we were rude and disrespectful. My mum diplomatically asks the guy to please stop shouting. As 
his screaming had now affected all of the 10 courts around the tennis club. And he starts hurling insults at my mum. My mum calls one of the referees over, who tells the parent that he can't yell at us, and that supporting players is permitted in the rules. The entitled parent doesn't like this and leaves, or so we thought. He instead walks down behind the side of the court where my brother was playing and begins taunting him from behind. He starts to rattle the fence that surrounds the court, yelling insults like, my son is better than you, and you don't deserve to win. And at one point, I'm pretty sure he started going into a semi-racist rant, yelling something about immigrants or something. The match finishes and my brother wins. I can't fault the other kid. He seemed more embarrassed than anything, but that's when crap hit the fan. The entitled parent walks straight up to my brother as he's packing up his things and starts yelling at him. My brother, who was 12 at the time, stood there completely shook, confused and on the verge of tears as this grown man is screaming insults at him, threatening to have him disqualified for beating his son and saying that he was cheating the whole game. The ironic thing was the other kid actually had point violations for making purposefully wrong line calls. My mum at this point enters full grizzly bear mode and storms down to start yelling at this guy whilst my dad calls the police. Me being the 16 year old wannabe hard man was about to run down and get right in the action until one of the coaches told me to just leave it otherwise we could get into more trouble. The entitled parent was arrested for harassment and his son was disqualified from the tournament. I actually feel sorry for the kid seeing as I talked to him a bit later and he was actually quite nice. The entitled parent though got what was coming to him. Recently myself and a few of my bandmates saw the guy again at a tournament in our hometown and as a sweet bit of revenge super glued an adult toy to the front of his Mercedes. Parents go nuts over kids in sport teams. Usually it's because they're trying to fulfill something in their life that they never really completed themselves. So if my child is successful then somehow I am successful. I think you could have an entire subreddit r slash soccer mums or in this case r slash tennis dads that would probably be full of stories like this. I was at a water park with a friend and we were just messing around and having fun. I was told I could wear my leg on some slides below a certain rating, 8 out of 10, and I knew why. The level 8 slides are really really fast, but the level 10 and 9 slides were ultra fast, and you have to be above 5 feet to ride them. So me being taller than most my age could go on all these slides, just not with my leg on some of them. So me and my friend were just starting off on our second slide of the day, and this slide was a level 4. Four, so nothing too bad. Me and my friend were waiting in line, talking among ourselves, when I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and cue our entitled parent. EP asks me about my leg and asks things like why it's missing or about the prosthetic. Then she asks if she can touch it. And of course I say yes because it's not a big deal, but this is a very basic leg with a silicon liner and a socket for my leg and then just a metal pole down a custom made foot. I say custom made because this will be important important later on. So this lady touches my leg, then asks if her son can touch. And of course I say yes, right? I was thinking that he was going to touch it. Nope. This little kid straight up grabs it and tries to yank it off me. As I said earlier, we had already been on a slide, so the leg was wet and it kind of just popped off. And I was kind of taken aback, but I let him hold it and look at it. Then he noticed the foot and the foot was spring loaded and had an ankle joint I built myself. The ankle is adjustable so I can run in the leg just by turning a knob. He starts messing around with this and I ask him to stop. When he doesn't, I reach down and grab it back from him and set it back to its original state. The kid then starts crying saying he wasn't done looking at it and the mother says something along the lines of, give it back, he wasn't done. When I don't, she starts saying I hurt her child by yanking my leg back and that I should not even have the leg on the slide because it was a danger to children. When we got to the top, we were about to go down the slide. Then she stops us and asks the lifeguard if I'm allowed to have my leg on the slide. Of course the guy doesn't know and lets the other people go past while he radios back to headquarters, asking if I can have it on the slide. I look back at the parent as she has this smug grin, saying, you waited all this time for the slide and now you can't ride it. The guard gets back and tells the parent I'm allowed to have it and I can go down the slide. The parent's jaw drops and the last thing I hear before me and my friend go down the slide in those two person rafts is, he hurt my child. Man, sometimes a 
it's tough being a kid. Like, imagine having this disability, just trying to have a good time. You go up to the slide, you're waiting for it, you're even nice to this lady and let her touch it and whatever. And then she starts harassing you, and then you're about to go down the slide, and then because you're a kid, the guard doesn't trust you, so he has to call back to headquarters. You'd feel so powerless. The EP couldn't even admit that she was wrong in the end. She had to still make up lies. I work in a small cinema with one screen. This morning, we had one last screening of Mary Poppins at around 11 a.m. I am glad it's over as it's brought in some rude and straight up disrespectful people, especially parents, since December. So I'm in the auditorium watching The Favourites, sitting close by to the till at the front of the venue, just in case. During a brief moment of quiet in the film, I hear the voices of children and their loud footsteps coming closer from outside. They're guessing loudly what the film they think they're coming to see. Red flags amass in my mind because it's an hour into the film. In my attempts to go to the entrance in time to stop them coming in, they've already barged in. Why is it so dark? One kid asks. The parents approach me, not before scanning the room of the audience, all looking over in our direction. Frowns as far as the eyes could see. Is this Mary Poppins? The mum bellows, purse in hand and breathing heavily in my direction. Sorry, but can you keep it down? There's a film playing. Also, no, that's been and gone today, I said. What's this then? This is the favourite. It's a 15s, so you can't bring your kids in anyway. It said Mary Poppins on the website. I hate to be rude, but can you please leave? We're in the middle of a film and you're disturbing everyone. The kids are trying to open the now locked drinks fridge, rattling the locks and banging at it. The whole time, the dad is just standing there, mouth breathing and looking at me like I'm filth. Well, it's not my fault the wrong film's on. This is the right film. Mary Poppins was on once a day at 11. That's it for today. People are trying to watch this film. You all need to leave. Where's the manager? I'm not speaking to you anymore. I am the manager. You need to leave. At this point, some anonymous hero just yells, screw off, in the audience behind me. I'm amazed at this point as they somehow accept defeat after boasting confidently how right they thought they were, not before saying, we won't be coming here again then. If your parting line is, we won't be coming here again, after you've been a complete hassle to everyone and they've asked you to leave multiple times, chances are your words aren't going to have much of a sting. In fact, it's probably going to be music to their ears. You know what would have been a real pain? If you said, we're coming back here every single day for the next week. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.